ingenious financier, flushed billionaire, magnanimous philanthropist, or a globalist NWO messiah, George Soros is known for anything the wild imagination can conceive. And let's spill the beans, it's a challenge knowing where to begin when it comes to charting the saga of this Hungarian-American financier. Subjected to multiple spiderwebs of conspiracy theories, this man's name often sparks a range of emotions. Anything from fear and fury to awe and admiration, his persona has become a boogeyman for authoritarian politicians around the globe, holding a bitter taste in the mouths of fanatical leaders like Donald Trump, Viktor Orban, and Recep Tayyip Erdogan. As a result, uncovering the man that hides behind the layers of such crackpot conspiracy theories can often feel like peeling onions. Such that even before we can mention his date of birth, his first job or favorite sport, we have to scurry past the smokescreen that blurs the view. However, once the smokescreen is cleared, a new person suddenly comes into view. A man whose story no nutjob YouTube commentator would ever dare to know. Indeed, what a jaw-dropping one it is, at that, as we shall reveal in a moment. So if you've ever seen his recent photo, you wouldn't be alone to wonder just how old he is. According to his birth certificate, he was born in the year 1930, which makes him 90 years of age, or 9 decades old, whichever sounds bigger. Notwithstanding his achievement in living so long, these 90 years have much to show in terms of struggles and successes. See, when he was born, anti-Semitism was bubbling and hatred towards Jews was intensifying. Born a Jew, his name was originally Schwartz Georgi, but he later changed it to George Soros as he had to hide his Jewish identity in order to save himself from suffocating in a gas chamber. In the 1930s, the Nazi party in Germany arose to the helm and began peddling its fascist and anti-Semitic ideology across Europe. In 1938, Austria and a portion of the Czech Republic fell to Nazi control. In 1939, the Second World War broke out, which saw multiple horrors unleashed on the Jewish community. As Hitler's offensive spread eastwards, swallowing Hungary in 1944, Hitler implemented his final solution in order to erase the Jewish community off the map. The deportations of Jewish families in Budapest began to escalate, and every Jew had report to the Judenrat, which means Jewish Council. This included the 13-year-old George Soros, who only managed to escape the tentacles of the Nazis by impersonating as a godson of a Christian government official. Truly, these were desperate times for Soros and his family, which was only made worse by the raging battles between the Nazis and Soviets taking place on his doorstep. Nevertheless, Soros and his family survived, and today, Soros fondly recalls many of his heroic escapes and near misses between 1944 and 1945. Anyway, Shortly after the war's conclusion, Soros moved to London in 1947 to study at the London School of Economics. There, he met world-famous philosopher Karl Popper, who became a major influence in Soros' intellectual development. In 1951, Soros was awarded a Bachelor of Science in Philosophy and then a Master's and PhD in the years that followed. Reportedly, Soros received his first job by writing letters to every banking manager he could find the address of and received a reply from only one or two of them. For the next 20 years, Soros worked at a cluster of financial institutions and sharpened his aptitude in navigating financial markets. In 1963, Soros coined the theory of reflexivity, which posited that fluctuations in the market are driven by fallible human ideas and not solely by the raw economics of a transaction. In essence, human ideas of a situation and the situation itself feed into each other to form a reflexive feedback loop, which then shape the outcome as an interacting pair. Putting this into concrete theoretical terms helped revolutionize the world's understanding of financial markets at the time. In 1973, Soros established his own hedge fund in order to direct his investments. Initially called the Soros Fund, it was later renamed the Quantum Endowment Fund. Then began his journey to the apex of the mountain as he embarked on a daring series of bets and investments. Many of the investments were directed to short-term and speculative transactions, often betting on the currencies of nation-states. 
and, despite a few major losses, the fund became a behemoth in the investment world, giving birth to many more hedge fund tycoons like Jim Rogers. Within moments of the fund's completion, it became known for its high returns and risky gambles. Later in September 1992, Soros's fund betted on the collapse of the British pound sterling, also known as shorting against the British pound. The bet went in Soros's favor. The price of the pound sterling vis-a-vis -vis the dollar fell, and Soros made a billion pounds in windfall in only 24 hours. The British Treasury, on the other hand, lost billions of pounds in its reserves, for which the day became known as Black Wednesday. On the papers next day, Soros himself became known as the man who broke the Bank of England. This move became emblematic of George Soros' investment flair, for which he gained oodles of notoriety as a result. Later in the 1990s, Soros began piling bets against the currencies of Southeast Asian nations like the Thai baht and the Malaysian ringgit. In 1997, however, when the Asian financial crisis swept the seaboard, both the Thai baht and the Malaysian ringgit nosedived. And although the economies of the two nations took a large hit, Soros made a fortune, which then led to further accusations of profiting from immoral pursuits. In fact, the Malaysian Prime Minister at the time, Dr. Mahathir Mohamad, blamed Soros for the whole debacle of the Asian financial crisis. Soros denied these accusations and blamed the Malaysian government's missteps for the currency collapse. However, the damage was done, both the region's economy and to his already notorious reputation. Accentuated by the Asian financial crisis and the financial crash of 2008, these events triggered a much-needed debate on the viability of a system that allows money to flow between borders like mercury. Since it was the system of uncontrolled capital flows which emerged in the 1980s that enabled investors like Soros to short change on currencies and profit upon market instability. And on that, even Soros himself wasn't blind to the darker consequences of his activities. In fact, he even became his own biggest critic at times. In October 2009, Soros established the Institute for New Economic Thinking. This organization was designed to reformulate current policies on the global economy and give birth to a more sustainable economic system. Soros pledged a whole $50 million of funding for the concoction of new economic thinking. So despite profiting from what he admits is a flawed system, he remains proactive in finding solutions to prevent his own folk from causing trouble. This, as we shall discuss further, actually reveals another element of his unique personality. Nevertheless, Soros still owes much of his fortune to the audacious yet controversial investments mentioned previously. In 1969 and 2009, a whole 40 years or more, Soros's wealth grew at a compound rate of 26.3% every year. In other words, if you gave $10,000 to Soros's fund in 1969, your investment would amount to $143.7 million in 2009. Even Warren Buffett would be raising an eyebrow, since his compounded rate for the same period was a smaller 21.4%. In essence, when it comes to risky investments in volatile environments, it's clear that Soros is the indisputable winner. In recent years, George Soros has pivoted his attention more towards philanthropy and political activism. Known for founding the Open Society Institute, Soros has been an enthusiastic proponent of liberal democracy and civil liberties. This organization has funded numerous projects around the world centered on human rights, democracy and equality. In his own words, the organization aims to nurture vibrant and tolerant democracies whose governments are accountable to the people. Inspired by his time at the London School of Economics with Karl Popper and his experiences under Nazi-ruled Hungary, Soros has poured billions of dollars to fund projects that he believes will make the world a freer place. In the early days of his philanthropic ventures, he offered scholarships to black students from apartheid South Africa, which was heavily discriminatory towards its black population at the time. Closer to the end of the Cold War, Soros seized the moment to fund the democratic transitions of many post-Soviet nations in Eastern Europe. 
Since then, the Open Society Foundation has supported pro-democracy movements, many of them in countries with tyrannical dictatorships like Uzbekistan and China. To date, he has given over $32 billion from his own pocket to fund the activities of the Open Society Foundation. This exceeds even what Bill Gates has managed to funnel through his Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Truly, with over 37 regional offices and a presence in over 100 countries, the foundation has become a powerful beacon of progressive values worldwide. As hinted previously, this has sparked the ire of many authoritarian and illiberal politicians, most notable the Prime Minister of his birthplace, Viktor Orban. In 2015, the Open Society Foundation was banned in Russia, having been accused of jeopardizing Russian security. Later in 2017, it pulled out from Hungary in light of increased pressure from its increasingly authoritarian Prime Minister. In the United Kingdom, Soros donated £400,000 to organizations fighting against Brexit, the populist-driven departure from the European Union. In 2016, Soros endorsed Hillary Clinton for the US presidential election, calling Donald Trump an imposter, a con artist, and a would-be dictator. Expectedly, this has triggered the rage of millions of pro-Brexit Brits and Trump-loving Americans, with many of them peddling conspiracy theories in order to demonize him. Due to his Jewish heritage, many of the conspiracies have anti-Semitic undertones, accusing him of being a Jewish banker secretly plotting a new world order of some sort. Though, given his avid commitment to ideas the populists balk at, he seems to take their hatred as a badge of honor. In fact, in 2018, he became a target of an assassination attempt when a pipe bomb was placed in the mailbox of his New York home. Fortunately, the attempt failed as the package was discovered and then later detonated by the FBI. That said, he remains steadfast in his beliefs and never hesitates to make them known. Whether it's his criticism of US foreign policy, the European Union, Israel's occupation of Palestine, or the refugee crisis, George Soros doesn't mince his words. In his books, he's been damning in his criticism of American leadership, calling the United States the main obstacle to a stable world order. And despite being a Jew, he has detached himself from Israel and has said he doesn't want anything to do with it. In response to Europe's refugee crisis, he proposed a new Marshall Plan for Africa in order to generate economic opportunities in the countries where most refugees are arriving from. And although many people may not agree with his suggestions or comments, ears always remain open for what Soros has to say. So there we have it. A man who's a hero for some, a villain for others, a political analyst for another few, and a classic moneymaker for the rest. George Soros, truly a maverick that defies any definition of a typical billionaire. So what's your personal opinion of the man? Share your thoughts in the comments section down below. If you've enjoyed this, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing. Thank you all for watching. I will see you soon, continuing to share great business stories past and present and whatever else happens in the business world. So thank you all and have an excellent rest of your day.